Hey Diana, look at this. Too small. It needs a couple of handles. Hi, my name is Tony, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. Also, if you're one of my subscribers, watch till the end and see how you can win this tool. Yes, I'm giving this away because I recently hit 90,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. And I'll think of something even cooler for when I hit 100k. So go! Subscribe while it's still free. Be smart. But this won't cut itself. So watch this short intro where I will show you how to print the pattern, punch the stitching holes and cut your leather the easy way. In that order. Before you start your project, consider very carefully what leather you will be using. Once you've decided on the leather you're going to be using, go ahead and open your pattern files using Adobe Reader. Free to use, free to download. And make sure actual size is checked. The first page of any pattern will contain a sizing diagram. This will help you make sure that the proportions are okay and you have measurements in both centimeters and inches, all right? Now you can go ahead and cut all the patterns out of the leather. This stage, you don't really have to cut precisely on the black line, you can leave a little bit off. After you have all the pieces cut out of the paper, you can go ahead and attach them to the leather you're going to be using. For this, I recommend you use regular masking tape you can find at any hardware store. It's time to punch every single stitching hole. Be patient, do not rush at this stage because it will determine how straight your stitching will be later. I use 1.5 round millimeter hole puncher. A link to this particular tool and other recommended tools I use on a daily basis in the video description. Once you finish punching all 20 holes, you can go ahead and cut the leather. Once more, take your time. Be very, very careful when you're cutting the leather because any slip, any wrong cut can ruin your whole piece. Now repeat the same process to punch and cut out every other piece needed for uh, your design. For this bag I used 6 ounces of vegetable tan leather. For the bottom, um, the zipper holder here and the handle inserts. And 5 ounces chrome tan leather for the main body and the outside of the straps. Now, first, stitch these two pieces together. I used one millimeter wax thread and 1.5 millimeter holes. Links to most of the tools and the hardware I used in this and all my other videos down in the video description.
Don't forget to insert your logo, your maker's mark somewhere here because, um, you know, I designed it, but you made it and your customers like to know that. After you're done attaching these two pieces, let's make and attach the handles. Five ounces chrome tan leather is soft, so use some stiffer leather like this six ounces vegetable tan to reinforce the handles on the inside. Just fold the outside piece on top of the middle strip like I do here and stitch it along this line. There are four heart-shaped pieces of leather somewhere in your, in your leather pile. Use one at each end of the strap like I'm going to do next. They should also be six ounces vegetable tan leather.
Now attach the other end of this handle and make sure you do it across this middle stitch here where this small label is. That's one strap and if it was too much work I guess you could leave out the other one because yeah, you got nothing to lose. Correction, you got a lot to lose. You're gonna look ridiculous wearing a one handle ladies bag around the town. Give me a short dress, a pair of high heels and then we're talking. Anyway if you decided to attach the second handle you should be now looking at a bag with no top and no bottom. Pretty useless, I gotta say. But uh, we got some more leather, so let's see if we have enough to finish this. Time to tackle the zipper. If this is your first zipper, don't worry. I'll be here to hold your hand till it's all over. The exact length of this zipper is about 43 centimeters or 17 inches if you don't speak European. You most likely gonna find a smaller or a longer zipper. So this is what you're gonna do. Use the small zipper to make this or trim the large zipper like I'm about to do next to do this beautiful bag. See, that wasn't too hard, but remember to melt the ends with a lighter like I did so the fabric doesn't come undone. Now we need to glue the zipper to its leather holder so we can stitch it later. I hear double sided tape also works, but if you got some cement glue and a syringe around, let Dr. Tony show you how to stick the zipper to the leather clean and easy. Torch is gonna be easy. Now place the leather piece on top of the zipper and uh, let it dry for a while. Now 
Now you need to punch the stitching holes through the zipper and then you can continue. Try not to pull too hard because that will cause ripples and waves into the zipper and you don't want that. When you reach the center here, if you use the right needles, you can actually squeeze through the teeth of the zipper. Pull a bit harder, but it will go through. Nice and straight, like it should be. And before you know it, the zipper is done. Now let's attach this to the top of the bag. Start from the very end here. There is this seamless transition here because why keep things so easy all the time? I will zoom in so you can see exactly how to continue with your stitching.
You can pause and play that again. This is YouTube, not Bob Ross tutorial, okay? And then when you get to the other end, I will show you up close how to transition one more time. Okay, well done. The zipper is attached to the bag. Thieves everywhere will see your bag and reconsider their life choices. But you still need a button for your bag. Let's take care of that next. We start by attaching this white strip all around here. Once you made the loop out of it, find the center of the bag and start attaching it from there.
it starts to look more and more like a proper bag. Put that away for a moment, please. Don't just leave it anywhere though. Don't repeat the same mistake I did. Right about this time, Diana saw this unfinished bag. And before I knew it, I wasn't working on a bag no more. I was working on her bag. Okay, time to wet shape the bottom piece here. Try and get the edges bent inwards at 90 degrees along the stitching line, the best you can. Don't sweat it too hard, eventually the leather will take the shape you want, especially if you used vegetable tan leather like I did. Next, grab this thin piece of leather and uh, stitch it around the edge like I'm doing here. Thank you. 
Once you close the stitch, you can rub some more water and shape it even further. Now that looks pretty nice, let's stitch it to the rest of the bag next. I used paper clips to hold everything in place till I get my stitching line going. Also, kind of important, try and match the middle of this piece here with the middle of the main body, or else you're gonna get a crooked bag. And this face should tell you that's less than ideal. And that's it. I'm sure you've made a great bag. And uh, if you want to see other bags made with this pattern, join our secret Facebook group where you can even show your own creation. Link to this secret group in the pattern instructions file. Now it's time to give this whole puncher away. This is a uh, six prong round hole puncher spaced at six millimeters so it can fit most of my patterns and it's made by uh, Sina Brooks. It's, um, it's an amazing tool, I use it every day. But I need to pick a winner, so just drop a comment below and tomorrow I will pick one at random. Check if you're subscribed and award this shiny piece of metal to you. Good luck. That's it. 
Now go away, make things. I'm out, peace.